Hey Floss Tube, welcome back. This is my 94th Floss Tube video, and I'm excited to share with you what I've been working on. But first of all, I want to welcome you. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you enjoy the things that I have to share with you. And if you are returning, thank you for coming back and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for all of your comments, and thank you for liking my videos. It's been a while since I made my last video. Um, I've had a couple of really busy weekends. Um, so I have a lot to share with you, and I'm excited to share with you all of the, all of the stitching that I have done. Uh, but first, I have some questions that were left on my, uh, in my comments since my last video, and I thought I would just answer those first. So first of all, Anastasia uh, complimented me on my English Garden Sampler by Teresa Wensler. Uh, she is considering stitching a Teresa Wensler piece and asked if I had any tips for, for stitching Teresa Wensler pieces. And I do. So I have three, uh, three suggestions that you can use uh, when you're stitching a Teresa Wensler piece. Uh, the first suggestion is to figure out how to deal with blended threads. Uh, if you're not familiar with Teresa's designs, she really loves um, blended threads. And most of, the, most of the colors that she uses are actually uh, two different colors that are blended together. So uh, you have to figure out how to deal with that. Uh, what I like to do is I like to blend my threads as I go, uh, but then I have a bobbin for each blend. And when I, when I finish stitching a color that is, is blended and I have enough le left that I'm going to want to use it again, I will um, put it on a, on a new bobbin and I will, uh, I will mark the symbol for that blend on that bobbin so that the next time I would need to stitch with that, that symbol, all I have to do is go looking through, through all of my bobbins of my blends and find that, the symbol that matches. That way I don't have to worry about uh, picking out the, a new color again and everything's ready for me. Uh, one of the things that you find when you're dealing with a lot of blends is that um, it gets kind of cumbersome to, uh, to be blending thread all the time, and so that's how I get around that. Um, there are other people like um, Dina, who's half stitch, cross stitch. Um, she likes to blend things right up at front. She'll she'll uh, blend f uh, six strands together because that's um, the that's the number of she'll basically cut a length length of the two colors that she wants to blend, and she'll she'll blend all six strands together at once. Uh, so you can do that as well. Or maybe there's some other way that you can uh, figure out how to organize your blended threads. But the, that's the first tip is to figure out how to deal with, with your blends because that'll, that's a major part of her designs. Uh, the second suggestion that I have is uh, to learn how to deal with the confetti. Um, I think Teresa has a rule of thumb and that's that she doesn't want to put uh, two stitches of the same color right next to each other. Um, there are some case times when they are right next to each other, but in general they're not. Uh, it really makes a nice effect because of the, of the way that the colors are in her, her designs. They're, they are very, um, basically you have a whole bunch of different colors that overall make the effect of, of what you're doing. So it's really cool looking. But uh, that, that also means that her designs are really complicated and there is a lot of confetti. Uh, so I would say if you're stitching a Teresa Wensler design, uh, don't worry about the back of your fabric. Um, it's just going to be a real mess. I carry, uh, I carry all the time when I'm stitching one of her designs uh, just because if I didn't carry, I'd be starting and stopping with every stitch. And that, seemed to be, that would seem to me to be just as messy as, as carrying. So, um, yeah, so I would say don't worry about your back, um, just, uh, just, just deal with it and, and learn how to do that. Um, kind of a uh, part of that is uh, maybe you want to learn how to park if you don't park already. That will also help. That will also help. It'll help you to not get confused um, 
and you might want to also uh, decide how to mark your chart. That will also help you from getting lost. Uh, when my the first Teresa Wensler that I started, I wasn't parking and I wasn't marking my chart, and it made it very difficult for me after I had stitched several colors to actually see. Uh, first of all, where a new stitch, uh, a, a stitch that hadn't been stitched, to figure out what color it was that it needed to be, and then to see how to tra travel from one stitch to another just because it was just really, uh, really complicated. So you might want to learn how to park. I would definitely suggest marking your chart after you stitch a color so that you can see um, so that you can see what you easily see what you've stitched and not have to um, and not not have to try to puzzle things out when you go back and the the final suggestion that I have gee this is turning into five I thought I had three and now I have five but the final suggestion would be just enjoy the journey um, it's going to be a lot of work it's going to take a lot of time but your results will be worth it and you will be well rewarded at the end when you're, when you're finished. So um, just enjoy the journey. Don't get impatient. Uh, don't, uh, don't get discouraged. Just keep working on it. Um, eventually it will be finished. Uh, just take one stitch at a time and eventually you will have a finished design. Um, so those are my, my, those are my suggestions. I guess there's five there when I originally had three, but two came to me. Uh, while I was talking so uh, anyway so there's some some good suggestions for you um, okay the stitch and nurse uh, complimented me on on how nice my stitches look and she asked if I railroad and I don't railroad uh, and the reason why I don't railroad is I have tried railroading it doesn't seem to make a difference for me um, and so it doesn't seem worth my the time it takes to railroad uh, for me to do it. Um, now I'm not bragging and saying that my stitches are, are wonderful and I don't need to railroad. Uh, far from it. I, uh, when I look at my stitches uh, there are a lot of times when I'm not really happy with them. Uh, they don't really look, there are places where they don't really look as good as I would like them to but uh, railroading doesn't seem to do much for me, so I don't railroad. Um, if you, um, I would just say that the real, uh, the real key to making your stitches look good uh, is, is tension. Uh, you don't want to pull so tight that uh, you distort the fabric, and you don't want to pull so loose that your stitches are loose. So there's a real fine line, but you just have to be um, be, be very careful and be conscientious of your tension. And also, along with that, um, I've talked about this in my um, video when I talk about um, di my diagonal stitching. Um, try, to, try to stitch so that you are always uh, bringing your needle up from the bottom of the fabric uh, in a hole that doesn't have very many stitches in it. And when, when a hole has a lot of stitches in it, uh, try to go down in that hole rather than coming back up through. That will also help you. Um, so tension and and the way that you the way that you stitch your stitches, uh, the the method are, are are what I think are the best uh, suggestions that I have uh, for making your stitches look really nice. Sarah asked me if uh, the English Garden Sampler was a kit. Uh, no, I know it is available as a kit or was available. I don't know how readily available the kits are anymore. But I uh, was actually using a chart and I kitted it up with my own floss and, and fabric. And so um, the, the chart is available. If you are having a hard time finding a printed copy, I know that Pattern on, Patterns Online sells Teresa Wensler designs and I'm pretty sure the English Garden Sampler is available there as a digital download. Uh, so it is still available and is still easily accessible. So uh, if you want to stitch it, that, um, there's another option for you. So Doug asked me how I keep my whips organized. And he said it, it looks like I am as neat as a pin. And Doug, I'm sorry, I just don't show you my mess. <laughs> uh, no. Um, 
So what I do is I prefer using floss boxes with bobbins. Uh, so that's the big thing that I do. I have a stack of floss boxes on a shelf in my closet. And as I finish a design, um, as I finish working on a piece, uh, that floss box goes on the top. And generally, um, the design that I'm going to work on next is down towards the bottom and I pull that out from the bottom and let everything kind of kind of fall. Um, so that's basically all that I do. I have a big bin. I think I've shown it before. It's one of those bins that, um, one of those plastic bins that are used to store wrapping paper. Um, that's where I store all of my fabric. Well, not all my fabric, but all of the pieces I'm working on. They're just rolled up loosely into cylinders and placed into that bin. They are, um, that's also where I keep all of my, all of my finishes. They're all just kind of loosely stacked into there. Um, so when I want to work on a new whip, I put, I roll up the whip that I've been working on, put it in the box and pull out another one. Um, and that's about all I have for organization. Um, extra floss from old projects goes into a big plastic bag. That's not organized at all. Um, and you know, so I'm not really organized all that much, uh, but those are, those are the two things that I do to organize my whips. And finally, uh, Tammy asked me if I used a petite treasure braid instead of Krynik. And uh, I prefer Petit Treasure Braid over Krynik. I think this is in reference to my medieval town mandala that I'm working on. Uh, that pattern actually calls for Petit Treasure Braid. It doesn't call for Krynik. Um, but I, I prefer Petit Treasure Braid. It seems to stitch a lot nicer for me. Um, but I've never really substituted it for Krynik. Okay, so those are all the questions that I have. Thank you for your thank you for your questions and your comments. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about what I've been working on this week. Um, it's been, well, I should say this past month or so. It's been five weeks. So um, I'll share with you uh, what I've been working on in more or less chronological chronological order. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, uh, the first piece that I worked on uh, when I last. Uh, when I last made a video, I told you that I was going to be starting English Cottage Sampler. Uh, this is a design by Teresa Wensler. Uh, there's a rule that you always have to be stitching a Teresa Wensler piece. Uh, that is a rule. And uh, since I finished English Garden Sampler, I had to start a new one. And so this is what I decided to start. Uh, this is a design that I've had ever since I started cross-stitching. Uh, my wife gave this to me. Uh, right after I started cross stitching because I said I wanted to stitch a sampler and she came up with this um, and I'm really excited to stitch this I've really been looking forward to stitching it so um, I have been stitching it I started it about five weeks ago so I've really struggled uh, trying to decide what fabric to use the fabric that is called for in the chart doesn't exist anymore but I really like the way that that fabric looks. And so I've kind of had a hard time coming up with a, a color that I thought was equivalent to that. And I finally settled on uh, flax. Uh, I'm stitching this on 32 count flax, Belfast linen. And basically it's a, it's a very light uh, brown fabric. And I am so far I'm really happy with how this turns out. The, the, I like how, how things are looking on it. Um, the, the fabric in the chart looks like it's a little bit grayer, um, kind of like a light gray. I could be wrong, I've never seen the actual fabric, so I don't know, but that's what it looks like in the photo. Uh, but I think this is a good alternative. And I started down at the bottom, because that's where I tend to like to start. Um, and this is, this is how much I was able to stitch. So the, 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 this other corner is here, so I've almost finished uh, the entire bottom border. Um, and there's a whole bunch of leaves that have been stitched in here. And of course, the, the lines for the border. Um, I'll give you a little bit closer look, if, see if I can, so that you can see what's going on. So yeah, so basically ba all these 
all these lines and then all of these leaves. And um, when I've always been worried about stitching the leaves because they're just little stitch, little groups of stitches spread out all over the place. But I actually found that I didn't mind stitching the leaves all that much. They were kind of fun. Uh, there's a lattice. You might be able to see the lattice. There's a lattice that, that comes through here. And that lattice helps you to position the, the, the leaves. So I stitch the lattice first. And then I come back in and, and stitch the leaves. And then there's these little pink blossoms also in here. And you can, with a strand of floss, you can do, I can do three or four leaves at a time of that color. And with the lattice, I can just skip and do all the, all the leaves of a specific color that I'm looking for. I, I actually found that it's more of a pain to stitch, um, to stitch these lines because they're kind of monotonous. Um, and, but yeah, so... I'm like I, I'm really happy with what I got started with, and this 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 is a good start. I'm looking forward to to doing a lot more on this. Um, I think once I get the border stitched, then I'm just going to work up across the entire design. Um, the middle through here is actually not very busy, um, so it should go relatively quickly. It's this leaf border that's going to take the most amount of time, I think. But there it is. Uh, this is, of course, English Cottage Sampler by Teresa Wensler. Uh, one week's worth of work. And like I say, I'm really happy with it. Okay. So, the next piece that I worked on uh, this, um, I was working on uh, finishing up my rotation. And so the next piece that, that I decided to work on is Winter Quakers. Uh, this is a design by Rosewood Manor. And it's there's a series of four seasonal Quakers. I have all four, and I started with Winter. Uh, it's been a year ago. Is that right? I think it's been a year since I started this. And they kind of look like uh, kind of look like snowflakes. They're all pretty much diamonds. And then there's like there's like a whole bunch of snowflakes backstitched uh, through here that kind to kind of fill in the holes of the design. So um, this has been really fun to work on. And I'm stitching it with the called for dwarf. Uh, the fabric that the design calls for is Dwarf by Picture This Plus, and that's the fabric I'm using. And Dwarf is a very, it's a very pretty blue. I really like this, the blue color of this fabric. Um, and I've actually worked on this two weeks since my last, uh, since my last video because um, I kind of decided that I was going to work to try to finish this towards the end of the year. I am not sure if I'm going to do that now um, because I kind of got tired of this, but um, I'm kind of, this is, this, this piece is the one that I will most likely finish next and I'm kind of pushing towards um, finishing it uh, just to get it, just to get it done because I'd like to get another finish and it'd be nice to get another finish before the end of the year. So I'll show you a picture of what this looked like the last time you saw it. Um, it's been a while. And like I say, I've been working on this for, I've worked on this for two times. So I'll show you what it looks like now. And as you can see, um, I have stitched quite a bit. I'm really happy with what I've been able to do with this piece. So I've stitched basically uh, from up here, this corner down through here, and I stitched this, this great big huge diamond motif here. This is the largest motif in the piece. It takes up almost, it takes up like two, a page and a half in the, in the, on the chart. So I feel, I feel like I've really accomplished quite a bit by stitching that. Um, and it doesn't feel, I, I mean, I'm just over 50%, but it doesn't feel like there's a whole much, bunch left to do. I mean, there's a couple of, 
uh, there's a large motif here and a couple of large motifs over here and then a bunch of small ones uh, interspersed in there to fill up the, the, the holes and of course all of these backstitch, snow, backstitch snowflakes. So, um, so it feels like I'm, I'm on the down, downward trend with getting this finished and I would love to get it finished. So I'll give you a little bit closer look to, so you can see what it looks like. Um, yeah, I really love this motif. This, that, um, that, I just really love how that turned out. Um, and these little, these, these cardinals, these red birds, they just add a nice little pop of color. I, th I like the little splashes of red there are uh, in here. I think that's really, really a cool effect. And then there's, there's a little bit of red like, like in here too. Okay. Um, I got tired of this piece. One of the reasons I got tired is I started stitching this motif and I got it all the way around, almost finished and realized that I had miscounted right at the very beginnings. So I had to, I had to pick out almost the entire motif again because there was no way I was going to be able to fudge it. It just looked really lopsided and strange. Uh, so uh, when that happened, that kind of turned me off of this piece. Um, but I'm starting to feel like I can come back to it again. So, but this is, of course, is Winter Quakers. It's a design by Rosewood Manor. And yeah, I've, uh, my, uh, my spreadsheet says I have about three weeks left um, to finish this. So it's actually not, won't take very long to finish. Okay, so after I stitched uh, uh, Winter Quakers, I stitched one more. Uh, this was the last piece in my rotation, uh, and that is uh, the Red House Sampler. Uh, this is a design by Brenda Keys um, from the Sampler Company. It's a really nice design. Um, I started this at the beginning of the year, so we're coming up on a year since I started this. I haven't been really good at um, promoting this, but there is a stitch along for this piece. Um, if you follow the hashtag on Instagram, BTL Red House Sampler, uh, you can you can either follow us along, follow along with us in the in the stitch along, or if you if you would like to stitch this, you can also join us and post to that hashtag. Um, and I will, I will see your, I will see your stitching, and I, I really enjoy. I've really enjoyed seeing everybody who's worked on this. There are a couple of people who have already finished it. They started it and just stitched until they were finished, which there, that's really cool. So um, this is, um, but anyway, um, I'll show you what it looked like the last time you saw it. And I'm stitching this on 36 count parchment by Weeks Dye Works. Um, it's with the Zweigart base. And I am just, I, it has been kind of fun uh, working on this. So I'll show you, so um, this, is, this is a really nice re relaxing piece to work on. And this is, this is what it looks like now. So let me see, I stitched uh, this, this plant. I finished up this row of trees. Uh, these three motifs in the border, I stitched a couple more motifs over here. And I started work on this flower here. Uh, that flower looks a little bit naked. It needs some leaves. <laughs> so that's what I've got left to do is I, I need to stitch the, the leaves in this flower. And then there's like another row of trees and another similar flower over here. And then we'll be down into the actual house uh, for which this sampler has its name. So yeah, I'm, this, this one seems to be going pretty quickly. Uh, this is the third week I've worked on it this year. 
So this is about three weeks worth of work. And like I say, it looks really cool. Um, so this is, I'll give you a little bit closer look. This border, I just love this border. This is, th that's part of the reason why I wanted to stitch this is the border. Um, the colors by themselves, when you look at them, they, they look like they go kind of, they're kind of strange, but when they, it's stitched, it looks really cool. Uh, this plant is really cool. Uh, these blossoms are actually hearts, so there's four hearts in each blossom. And you wouldn't believe it, but this red is the same as this red, but when it's, it's surrounded by this tan color, it completely changes the character of that red. So this is uh, the Red House Sampler uh, by Brenda Keys of the Sampler Company. And I'm looking forward to working on this um, some more. Okay. Then after I stitched this, I stitched on Winter Quakers again because, like I say, I was... Um, I, I, I got it into my mind that I wanted to, that I was going to work on two pieces uh, to the end of the year, and I thought I could finish both two pieces by the end of the year. I've kind of pushed away from that a little bit. I'm still going to work on, I, well, we'll talk about my plans in just a sec. So uh, when, I, when I decided that I uh, wasn't really all that interested in, in going for two finishes for the end of the year, I debated about what to do. And so I decided, well, I'm just going to start up at the top of my rotation again. So I pulled out the, the piece that's my oldest piece uh, that I've been working on, and that turns out to be uh, a Mid-Amish Life, which is uh, this design. Uh, this was originally published in uh, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Um, it is a design in the... Uh, what was it? March, May, and July 1987 issues of Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. It's also available in this book, uh, 101 Best Love Designs from Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. And it's also available as an individual leaflet. Um, the final, it's also, I understand, in the final issue of Cross Stitch and Needlework, which was published a couple of years ago. Um, it's really hard to find. I got I bought this book before it was was scarce. So um, yeah, I've had a lot of people on Instagram say I, I wish I could find this and um, anyway, so I'm sorry if you can't find it. Um, it. This is what it looks like. It's a series of three designs that I am stitching as one in one piece instead of three separate designs. Um, and yeah, let's see, there's a, maybe this is a better picture to show you because it's here on the back as well, those three designs. Um, I'll, show you the, I'll show you what it looked like the last time you saw it. And I am kind of in this section where I've got long diagonals to stitch and so it is taking a long time to get through a diagonal, and so it doesn't look like I'm making as much progress as I actually am. Uh, the fabric I am using is 25 count Wedgwood Lugana, um, which is the, the fabric that it calls for. Um, because it's 25 count, I am stitching with three strands. Uh, which is kind of a pain. Uh, I, if I were to do this over again, I would find a light blue of a higher count so that I wouldn't have to stitch on three, using three strands. Um, but this is, this is what it looks like now. And you'll say, well, what's changed? Well, I stitched about a diagonal and a half. So uh, what it feels like a bit of a... Milestone, I've hit the top of the house right here. 
all that's left to stitch of the house is there's a, a dark brown line that's the roof line that goes through here. Uh, that includes the awning over the patio, or I guess this is the porch, probably the front porch. Um, and then uh, there's a little bit more of the chimney that comes up here. So that feels like a milestone, that the house is almost finished. Uh, we have this horse is also finished, and now we're going to get over into the cart. Uh, this man right here, he's all finished except for his hand and more of his hat. Uh, that'll be stitched the next time I start working on this. And the other milestone is, is this is the bottom corner of the second design, which is visiting the neighbors. You have hanging the quilts, visiting the neighbors. So the next time I come through here, I'm going to move over into the third design, which is tending the garden. So that feels like a bit of a, a milestone as well. That, this is the last chicken I have to stitch. So I'll give you a little bit closer look so you can see how these things are looking. But yeah, I'm really happy with what I, what I was able to, 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 to finish. And it's really starting to feel like it's all coming together. Uh, the next big thing that I have to stitch is the barn. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get to the barn, but I'm looking, that's what I'm looking forward to is, is stitching the barn. Uh, there's a red barn that, that straddles uh, these two designs over here, kind of like the house straddled the first two. So that's a mid-Amish life uh, design that was published in Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Okay. So what am I going to do? I've been debating about how I was going to work through my rotation uh, because I have been, I've decided that the way things are now, uh, everything, uh, when I started my rotation a long time ago, I had, there was a nice mix of old and new pieces, but as time has gone on, all of my old pieces have moved up to the front and the newer pieces are now at the end. So I have to stitch a bunch of old pieces before I get to the new pieces and that can kind of be um, I don't know would, the stuff that I've been working on for a long time that I'm a little bit tired of it feels like I have to go through a whole bunch of those before I get to the newer pieces that I'm a little bit more excited to work on so I've I've tried randomizing my rotation um, that didn't work very well because uh, the 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 wheel that I used to spin, it seemed to just pick everything, all the old pieces first anyway. I probably That probably wouldn't happen if I did it again, but I'm going to do it a little bit more systematically. So I've, I, right now I'm working on 10 pieces. I've, take, I've put two on hiatus for right now. They'll come out later, but not right now. So 10 pieces, I've made a list of my five oldest pieces my five newest pieces and I just finished the top of my five oldest pieces now I'm going to go to the list of my five newest pieces and stitch the oldest of the newest if that makes sense and I'll just work through those two lists and that'll that'll basically construct my my rotation as I go forward so what is the the design that's my oldest new whip uh, that would be this. Uh, this is um, Time and Season Sampler by Moira Blackburn. Uh, this is a design that my wife gave me for Christmas last year. And I've stitched on it a couple weeks and I've really enjoyed working on it and I'm excited to, I'm excited to pull it out again. I would love to get this finished. And it seems to be going pretty quickly. So it really won't take all that much time uh, to for me to stitch so I'll show you what it looks like now uh, just so that the next time I pull it out you can see what it looks like um, I think I showed this in my last I think I worked on this my last time I showed my video so um, it's not that 
old. It hasn't been that long. But I've stitched basically the bottom border, and now I'm starting to work on the the middle of the piece. And I'm I'm just really loving this piece. I love the I love the colors, um, and I'm excited to see what else is going to appear here. So uh, the big thing that I'm going to start working on first is this tree. This tree is huge. That'll take up a lot of space. And. That'll, that'll be really cool. So that's what I'm going to be working on starting tonight. And we'll see how far I get. Okay, uh, before, I, uh, before I close, um, I just want to share with you a couple of charts. Um, I have been, kind of reworked my spreadsheets a little bit. Um, I, I've redone the way that you enter data and it has simplified a lot of a lot of the formulas um, I don't know if it's made it so things run faster but it really feels a lot less kludgy to me <laughs> um, it, it, it really um, appeals to the programmer inside me what I've done so I kind of have um, uh, structured it like um, if you were to, if I were to create some kind of a relational database uh, to store all of my information, it matches that kind of a structure, and it makes it really nice. It makes it so that um, I can easily uh, change um, my whips from active to inactive, uh, so that um, so that I don't have to do that. Another thing that I found is, and I've showed some graphs like this before, but I found that they were. Uh, kind of causing me a lot of a lot of angst um, because uh, I've I've had graphs that show how old my whips are or how many stitches uh, comparing them to other whips and as time goes on I get this great big huge uh, great big huge block um, that that I want to get rid of and it's just made it so that I haven't really it's just been really bugging me that I have these pieces that get these great big huge blocks and I know that there's um, uh, I, I'm not going to be able to get rid of them yet because there's still a lot to stitch on them so I've gotten rid of all the graphs that compare whips uh, by stitches and by the number of um, the number of days that I've worked on them there's nothing in there well I can still see how long it's been since I started a whip and I can see uh, how many days it is, but it's not as visually in my face that that I have uh, something that has been hanging on for a very long time. Uh, and I've come up with a new graph that I really like that kind of kind of shows how things go. I call it my whip status graph, and I'm going to show you my whip status. Uh, basically, what this is is the bars uh, show uh, the percentage complete. Of, of each of my whips. And you'll see in this um, in this graph that I have three that are over 50%. And so that kind of tells me how much I have left to, to stitch on each design. And then the line that goes through there, uh, each point in the line is the number of days that my spreadsheet predicts that are remaining to stitch on it. And I guess days is a little bit a uh, hazy term is probably a better term would be stitching sessions. Uh, if I stitch the way I have been stitching on that piece, uh, this is the number of days or sessions that remain for me to be able to finish that piece. So um, when the line is tall, that means I have a lot of time left to stitch on them. And when the line is closer to the axis, that means that I'm getting closer to being able to finish. And then the bars kind of give you a feel that way as well. Uh, one thing I'll say is that these newer whips over on the side where the bar is very high, I don't know how accurate that is. Um, when I first start working on a piece, uh, those numbers are going to oscillate around a little bit until I get enough days that will help uh, smooth things out. So you see hundred 27 days over here. Um, I don't know that that is how long it will actually take. As as time goes by, those numbers, well, of course, they're going to drop anyway, but 
the they may settle down into a, a, a fewer days. So that's my whip status, and I find this this really cool. Uh, I can look at any any of the things that I'm working on and get a feel for how much left I, I, I have left to stitch on that piece. Uh, so I really like that graph. Um, I'll also show you this. Uh, this is a graph that keeps track of the number of stitches that I have made over the year. So the bottom axis is the day of the year, and the vertical axis is the number of stitches. And as you go along, um, the number of stitches go is going to steadily increase up to a maximum at the end of the year. Um, the, I think it's a yellow line or an orange, orangish line uh, is the current year. And you can see that um, I, if I keep kind of at the pace I'm going, I may break a record. I, I may put in more stitches this year than I have in the previous years that I've been keeping track of that. So uh, that's kind of interesting. It doesn't feel like I've been stitching any more than I, than I have in the past, but I guess um, there's been a lot less demand on my time at night and I've, had, I've been able to more consistently stitch um, in the evenings uh, this year. So uh, I think that's kind of the explanation for that. Uh, I also, did this graph, uh, which is the number of whips I have each year, and you can you can see that um, this year I have also worked on more pieces than I have in the past. Uh, that is partly because of all of the starts that I did in May, and um, that has kind of been worrying on me a little bit. Um, so I'm right now I'm I'm trying to concentrate more on finishing stuff than. Um, doing any, any more new starts. I don't have a piece that's really Christmassy. I'd like to have a Christmas piece, uh, but I don't know if I'm gonna start one because I don't have anything that I really want to start this Christmas. So maybe I'll just go without uh, Christmas. But other than that, um, I would like to work on finishing. I mentioned my Winter Quakers. Um, that is going to be kind of the piece that I'm gonna focus on finishing now. Uh, so I will probably uh, stitch on it more frequently than it comes up in my rotation. Um, so look for that. Um, I'm, maybe I'll be able to finish it by the end of the year. Uh, that's a possibility if I can uh, bring myself to, to stitch on it more, more frequently, uh, which is what I want to do. My goal, I would love to get at least one more finish before the end of the year. Anyway. So the, the, those are kind of my plans going forward, and that's all that I have to share with you. So um, as always, uh, thank you for sticking around. Uh, thank you for subscribing to my video. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. That way you can see when my videos get posted um, more easily. Um, if you, uh, I'm always glad to hear from you and would be glad to answer any questions that you have for me. And feel free to like this video if you have enjoyed it. We, and as always, you can follow my daily progress on Instagram. I like to post a daily picture on Instagram to keep track of my progress. So you can follow me there and see uh, what, I do, what I'm working on at any time. Uh, I hope that you have, that everything goes well with you, and we will talk to you later. Goodbye.